Even though more than a century has passed since the end of the Victorian era, its elegant and romantic traditions still echo in today's art, culture, and fashion. One of the modern-day traditions that's still reminiscent of this golden era is weddings. But even our glamorized Victorian ceremonies can't measure up to the original deal. Today, we're traveling back in time to visualize what a Victorian wedding would actually look like in the Victorian era. So saddle up, because we're going to cover all the interesting nitty-gritty that turned Queen Victoria's wedding into a timeless tradition. The Wedding Announcement We all know that English tea parties can be pretentious and nerve-wracking, but I bet the tea would taste way better when coupled with a delightful wedding announcement. A wedding in the Victorian era would kick off with an elaborate wedding announcement. After the lady and gentleman fall in love and decide to get married, the gentleman would seek the consent and blessing of the bride's father. Once approved, the bride's father would hold a customary dinner to announce the wedding to his family's close friends and relatives. In return, the groom's mother would also invite the bride's family to dinner, and the two families would bond over the new relationship. It's also during this time that the bride-to-be would host elegant tea parties in gardens or parlors and invite her friends to the wedding. Invitation cards calligraphed in light script on smooth white paper would then be hand-delivered to only close friends and relatives. After all, Victorians preferred their weddings to be ceremonial rather than crowded. The Wedding Day if contemporary brides still choose their wedding days according to Victorian beliefs about different months and days, divorce would be a strange phenomenon, but this seems too good to be true, doesn't it? Victorians associated getting married on Monday with good health and on Tuesday with wealth, and they considered Wednesday the best day of all to get married. Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays were associated with bad luck, and Sunday was strictly the Holy Sabbath. Therefore, a Victorian wedding would happen on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Of course, old rhymes and proverbs tell us the Victorians also gave superstitious meanings to the months in which weddings took place. They associated getting married in May with bad luck and in September with fruitfulness. A Victorian wedding would most likely happen in June because Victorians associated this month with the Roman goddess Juno, who represented prosperity and joy. A June wedding also estimated that the couple would have their first child in the spring, which gave the bride enough time to recuperate before the fall harvest. The Wedding Dress Unlike the colorful wedding dresses worn in the 16th and 17th century, a wedding in the Victorian era would feature an all-white wedding dress with more layers than the cake. Can we just take a minute to appreciate Queen Victoria for establishing white as the traditional wedding dress color? We could still be walking down the aisle in brown. Although a white wedding dress was initially worn by poor brides during the 18th century, it became a Victorian hallmark that set precedence for all weddings after Queen Victoria wore it during her marriage to Prince Albert. This wedding dress would be made from lace, cashmere, silk, or linen, and it would feature a fitted bodice, a small waist, bustle skirts, and a full train. This design would enhance the feminine hourglass shape that was preferred in the Victorian era. Aside from the white wedding dress, a bride in the Victorian era would wear a lace, silk, or sheer cotton veil that would be pinned to the head with a crown of orange blossoms and would be as long as her train. This veil would cover the bride's face for most of the wedding ceremony, and it would only be lifted after the church service. The bride would also observe English traditions by wearing something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. Something old would be a beloved family heirloom, and something new would be her wedding dress or a piece of jewelry gifted to her by her husband. Something borrowed would be a veil she'd have to return to the owner, and something blue would be a handkerchief embroidered with the initials of her maiden name. Elegant, right? Unfortunately, remarrying widows in the Victorian era would not have the pleasure of donning a white wedding dress or a crown of orange blossoms. They would only wear lavender or pearl satin gowns embellished with ostrich feathers. The Groom's Attire A groom in the Victorian era would put as much deliberation into his attire as the bride. Okay. Maybe not equally as much, but he would ensure he looked smart and dapper for his beautiful bride. So he would wear a black top hat, tie, satin or silk waistcoat, blue frock coat, gray cashmere trousers, and embroidered gloves. His attire would also feature a charm flower attached to his coat. The overall look would be elegant and refined, which was the main elements of a wedding in the Victorian era. Bridesmaids and Groomsmen Bridesmaids would be young and unmarried, most likely the bride's younger sisters. Their dresses would be beautiful enough to complement the bride's dress without diminishing its prominence. 
Although they would wear similarly white and bustle dresses, theirs would be accented with shades of pink or light blue. They would also wear floral crowns and short white veils that fell below their hips, and the bride would gift them white gloves to complete their attire. The groomsman would wear similar yet conservative clothes as the groom, so as to let him remain the center of attention. Now, if your heart is already melting at the picturesque description of the bridesmaids and groomsmen, you should probably save a few pieces for the adorable flower girls and ring bearers that the Victorian wedding would also feature. The girls would portray innocence in white muslin dresses, accented with colorful ribbon sashes and matching stockings and shoes, and the boys would sweetly charm you in their dark colored jackets, matching hats, short trousers, and large silk bow ties. The Wedding Ceremony Every bride always nurses the fear that something might go wrong during the wedding ceremony, but not the Victorian bride. A wedding ceremony conducted in the Victorian era would be dignified, intimate, and marked by Victorian ceremonial rites. It would take place in a church or at the bride's home, and it wouldn't extend past 3 p.m. Since most Victorian wedding ceremonies took place in churches, this location would be decorated with flower arrangements that represented different meanings. Orange blossoms would represent fertility and purity, Stephanotis would promise a happy marriage, and orchids would symbolize true love. Wedding bells would ring to mark the start of the ceremony, and again at the end of the wedding to invite the attendees to rejoice with the bride and groom on their marriage. The bride and bridesmaids would stand on the clergyman's left side, while the groom and groomsmen would stand on his right. Both the bride and the groom would speak their vows, but only the groom would give the bride a wedding ring. This ring would be a plain or designed diamond ring, inscribed with the couple's wedding date and initials on the inside. After the ceremony, the newlyweds would sign their names in the parish register with the bride signing her maiden name. A box filled with small gifts like silver leaves, flowers, lace, and white ribbons would then be opened, and both servants and guests would pin one on their hats, coats, and shoulders. Even horses would get one on their ears. The Wedding Breakfast after the pomp and the elegance of the wedding ceremony, a wedding set in the Victorian era would now feature a wedding breakfast at the bride's home. Guests would congratulate the newlyweds on their nuptials before they all settled down to enjoy a full English breakfast. It would be customary for the couple to sit in the center of the table, with the bride's father and mother at the head and end of the table respectively. Unlike contemporary weddings that flaunt up to seven tier cakes, a Victorian wedding would feature only three simple cakes. One would be a fruit cake embellished with elaborate designs and white frosting. Another would be a light cake, and the other would be a dark cake. The light and dark cakes would be for the bride and groom, respectively, while the fruit cake would be shared with the guests. Charms meant to bring wealth or good luck to the married couple would be baked inside the cakes. As a show of good faith in the lasting endurance of their marriage, the couple would preserve the bride's light cake for their 25th wedding anniversary celebration. The Honeymoon even though the bride had been anticipating this moment from the beginning of the wedding, she would tearfully bid farewell to her parents and friends as she and her groom left for their honeymoon. They would ride off in a carriage to a destination known only to them, and guests would send them off by trying to throw satin slippers into their carriage. If one fell in, it symbolized that the newlyweds would live happily ever after. Well, does the original Victorian wedding live up to the buzz and high standards that still model our contemporary traditions? What do you think about the original practices? Share your thoughts in the comment section below and check out our other videos for more entertaining content.